loaded. Um, so if we look, okay. Obviously, this is the high. This is the. This has been the top. Let's see. This is where we've had failed breakouts. Essentially, the 70 to 72 level. All right. And obviously, what I noticed more than anything else is that we've now had one, two, three days of close above, and we're trading right into this uh, 70, 72 level this morning. It doesn't mean that we can't dip. Okay, so the breakout to the upside is not eliminated. We're clearly still in the overall buyers are in control. There's nothing bearish about this chart. Um, so, and that's the only way I look at bearish or bullish is are the buyers are in control or are the sellers are in control. The problem with the chart to the upside is that normally upside breaks, just like we had right here, are usually accompanied by gap, um, by gap and goes, uh, as opposed to simply trading higher in this direction. It's not that it can't happen, it's just much more often that it looks like a gap up, which we had here, and accompanied by a close at the high of the day. That generally marks at least an attempt to break to the upside. Uh, instead, we've just been consolidating right at the top of this zone, and generally speaking, and I'll stress this every day, generally speaking, unless we gap and go, betting that we're going to break the top side of a range, and the bottom of that range is right, this um, 30.32 is the bottom of the range, and this 40, even if we're setting a higher highs and higher lows, which I'll show you right here, okay, so there's two trend lines to pay attention to, this one right here, and then importantly, well, essentially, here we'll just leave that down here, here to here. Okay, so the first thing we want to see to figure out if we're going to get a test of this um, 1840 area is we have to break this um, what this potential uptrend, right? So remember, these are just lines on a chart, nothing more. I'm just looking to them for guidance. So at this point, when we, when we come in this morning, if we start trading roughly below this point and we show an inability to get back above, right, um, I will look for a continued downside move. I still think this 1840 area where we have an open gap sitting right here needs to get tested. We have an open gap just below that um, at the very minimum. Also, even if we trade below that, we have this um, from where we based last time, we were trading near 1810. Uh, we have another trend line that's sitting there and that certainly could uh, pick us up. The other question is, is there, um, is there anything to correlate either, either of these two? I want to look and see if there's a channel and if we're just opening at the bottom of the channel. The way I try to figure that out, okay, well, hmm. is generally, I would suspect, something like this is going to be the top of the channel. It's a daily. It's a little bit harder to draw. I might want to bring it in, or I can draw it from this point right here. But we traded both sides of it, so this could be could be the channel that we're in on a daily basis. Okay. Let's go back to the chart now and look at where I'm looking to take a trade. So the first thing I want to look for this morning is first of all open drive higher, open drive lower. Right. I don't show that we have any econ on the horizon. Audio is poor. John, is anyone else having a problem with the audio besides John? Okay, John, what, what I'll do is as soon as the, it, it may be, a, I'm not sure what the issue is. No one else is having an issue audio-wise. I'll send you the recording as soon as I'm done. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just send it over to you on Skype. So... Okay, thank you guys. So the um, so what am I looking for this morning? I apologize. Let's go back. The areas I'm looking to take a trade is first of all the white zone. Okay, I'm looking to see if we come back to close the gap. Uh, obviously, that won't be a, a huge uh, effort on their part. We're opening it. It looks like 72, 75, 72 area. It would only be a four point rotation up to the gap. I don't take I don't take a trade just on the gap. But simply, um, and I'm going to have to adjust this area for the Globex low, and I'll do that in a second. 
So let's do that really fast. I already know Globex slows back here. Okay, so 72 and a quarter. I had a zone here at 71. Mm, let's give it 10 more minutes and see, where, see if we get new lows going into it. What would be best or nice is if we just push into the white zone for the open. It would make it easy on me and then I could not worry about everything else. So right now Globex Low has pushed back to 72. Quarter. Move that here. I'll move. Okay, so I'm gonna have to figure this out here in just uh, in just a moment. It's still that was a decent zone there, so I'm gonna have to figure out where I, where I, how I want to handle that, and I'll think through it in a moment. I'll take a trade first time into the white zone, and I'll take a first trade a t um, first trade into the 6250, 6049 area. Um, also, I'll take a trade at Monday's high as well in this zone to the short side. I'm just going to bring this in a little bit so you can see them easier. So I'll take a long here, I'll take a long here, and I'll take a long at 1854, all three zones below. I am cognizant that we're poorly auctioned below, but I would still expect counter rotations. Now, if I get to the white zone, Right, and we just slice right through it. I'm going to want to see tick divergence in the zone below on one minute in the zone, not out of the zone, in the zone, uh, in order to take the trade. As long as we build some kind of, as long as I see that we're getting um, an attempt at a counter rotation at the white zone, just like we did yesterday to the upside, right? We paused it, each of the zones. So if we pause and we get an attempt back to the upside, I'm fine taking the trade at each of these zones below. If we come in and we get a little one point rotation then slice right through, I want to see tick divergence at the next zone below in order to take it, or I'll pass on the trade. Okay, that's the only caveat to each of these locations. Um, on the upside, I'll take a trade at Bubex High to the short side, and also this 1884-1886 area. I'll take a shot to the downside there, again, assuming the same thing. We don't get an open drive higher, and I see that we are getting reasonable counter rotations. Uh, one of the ways to measure that, although yesterday morning uh, wouldn't have counted, but on a lot of days where we start the open drive right out of the gate, right, we should see a pretty good range to start with. If you see a range of two points, three points, in the first 15 to 30 minutes of the day, it's going to be, first of all, that usually leads to balance, number one, so be patient. Let the market get stretched before you take a counter rotation, right? And secondly, um, when I see that in the first 15 minutes, I already know past 10:30, and we're highly likely just to get a grinding a, a grinding environment. It's not that you can't make money in a grinding environment; it's that I have difficulty trading a grinding environment because I have to work triply hard on my emotional management during those times because I start to develop anxiety that we're going to get flushed. Um, and I've only probably been flushed in a slow market a couple of times, but when you're sitting there and the experience is that you get hit for three or four points on random news that pops out because the market was just sitting there with nothing going on, or worse, an algo fires and just takes you out randomly. This is particularly important as we head into summer in the afternoons. Algos can wreak havoc on your trades in the afternoon on a market that is just chopping around, okay? Because they can see where those stops are and there's not enough volume to step to absorb those algos quickly. And they can put, and then the, the pushes, algos usually generate a push of a point to a point and a half. But I've seen in the summertime where they can generate pushes of two to four points at one shot. And it's frustrating because what that ends up looking like is this. Just for reference for y'all as we get into summer, right? You're sitting here chopping around like this. Algo fires, takes it down four points stops you out and then comes right back to where it was literally in one minute uh, or less and it's highly annoying and it's um, it's difficult to walk away after that happens because you feel robbed keep that in mind okay so let's talk about the areas below if we do get below the white zone okay these areas are all poorly auctioned all the way down to this 1840 1838 there's an open gap here we'll obviously be extremely stretched if we get down here and I'll be working 
Um, I'll need a one minute tick divergence even before, regardless of what the price action is. I need a one minute uh, tick divergence here. This zone is relatively weak, uh, weaker than I would like it to be to take a trade automatically. I will take a trade in the 46. This should read 46 and three quarter, 46.75 to 43.75. Also, the difficulty with this area, you should make a note, okay? These all three are stacked together in this area. If I was going to take, if I could only take two zones ahead of time that I knew, I would clear this one out and I would take either this one or this one, okay? And skip this. Even with a one minute tick divergence, this is a harder area. And so what I expect in this area is something like this, where it chops through and eventually we work our way down to hopefully uh, that open gap. I will take a trade open gap. I'll put a three point stop behind. I'll lower my trade size just slightly to survive a push lower uh, because it's actually in a poorly auctioned area. But generally speaking, the open gap trumps the poorly auctioned, at least intraday, right? And I would expect response to buyers here. I will try to launch a swing trade from here and from here back to the upside, meaning I'll probably move my stops to net break even down here, meaning once I get my two point scale uh, from wherever I took the trade, I'll move the stop, uh, I'll take the profits from the first half and get my uh, risk to net break even, but that could end up meaning that I don't make any money down here if we break both zones after the two point rotation. But that's my trade plan for today. That's how I'm gonna handle these two areas. We'll be very stretched, okay? I think that covers the downside. Let's talk about the upside, what it needs to look like. Obviously, we're getting responsive buyers in uh, from this area. Okay, first of all, we need to watch NQ. We want to see NQ go positive um, to begin with on the day. If it stays negative, it could end up dragging down ES. Secondly, what do we want to see? Well, the first thing we have to see is we need to get above Globex high, number one, which is 1881.50, right? And then the next test is going to be getting above the current swing high, okay? Remember, I'm taking trades to the downside out of both of these locations, between Monday's high and Globex high, and from the current swing high that we have, right? But if we get above this current swing high, okay, first of all, it's the last piece that has remote resemblance of being, uh, well, it's still a sorry auction, but it's not terrible, it's not completely, um, it's not completely unauctioned, okay? So if we get above here, right, there's not much stop in us at 1890.50, right? And then also keep keep in mind for your focus, how am I doing on time? Good. Okay. When I pull this all in, right, you'll notice on the charts, and let me uh, post a chart. Sorry, guys. Give me just one second here. Let me grab it. There's a chart for everybody. Um, okay, so you'll notice I have them marked 10, 10, 10 up, 20 up, 10 down, 20 down, right? Keep in mind your ranges from the prior day is important. Yesterday we traded from 1860.50 all the way up to 1879.50. So if we have a balanced day, I would expect a balanced day to be roughly half uh, the range from the prior day. Now, that's not a scientific estimate, right? But roughly, if we get down to the white zone, particularly the back, that'll be 10 points down from the prior day's open, okay? Uh, conversely, if we get to the current swing high, that's 10 points up. If we're in balance, when we get to these areas, we'll see the ticket primarily plus 500, minus 500, right? Um, I don't use the tick, the plus and minus 500, to get me long entries or short entries, but I do use it to, um, to give me a sense of whether we're balancing or not. I'm pretty sure there's no more econ coming out this morning. I looked last night. Let me verify real quick that that is a correct statement. We have a uh, econ data point at the top of the hour, but Forex Factory, I, I don't even know what the heck it is, quite frankly. It's an economic optimism survey. Um, at any rate, I don't 
I think it'll have any kind of effect on this one way or the other, and Forex Factory shows it to be a light to moderate impact on the market, so I'm not concerned about it, right? So, if we have balance, it's going to look one of three ways, so you can identify it. First of all, after 9.30, the key to a balanced day is that it will be, um, it'll be highlighted. Let's say we have a first hour range where we open, let's say we open this 73 area, right? We trade up to Globex high, we trade a little bit above, and then we come like this. After 9.30, right, if it's an upside bias, right, we can look like this, okay, all day. We can still have a balanced day that has an upward bias. It's certainly possible, and the year-to-date highs are certainly within striking distance. But what categorizes a balanced day is right when it looks like it's about to break out, it comes back to the middle of the range. Right when it looks like it's about to break down, it comes back to the middle of the range. The easiest way to trade balance is from the outside back in. Okay, um, Again, outside, back in. And this can look one of three ways, right? We can either have true balance where it looks like this all day, okay? Or it can look like this. We open, we drive lower, come back up, and then get into range, and we do this, or the inverse, right? We push up, then we balance back down like that. There's one more variant of that. Again, this is easy, pretty easy to identify because you'll see after 930, we just go to plus or minus 500. The other variant of that is we can drive higher. Let's say we open 72, we get up in the Globex high, and we just balance at the t wherever the top of that extension was and fail to go up or down and balance sideways. Um, so these are relatively easy if you can identify them quickly, um, and the zones will provide repeated support and resistance areas. I still only trade the first touch of the zone in balance. If I take the second touch of the zone, I have to have one minute tick divergence, and I consider the risk higher. So if you're going to take second touches and you identify that we're in balance, right? Understand the risk and understand that you probably want something to support you besides simply it's in the zone. Okay. Um, so I think I gave all the trades. If we get above the year-to-date high, year to date high, I will be very reluctant to take a short uh, prior to this 1899-1901 area. I would rather see it um, break then get back below I would consider that a trap and I would attempt to take it uh, an attempt to, attempt to trap back to the downside right also if we're breaking higher I want to see NQ uh, breaking higher as well um, it was not able to clear um, it was not able to clear its previous day's high yesterday so I guess Monday Friday's high was unable to clear Friday's high so the first thing I want to see is that can it clear yesterday's high is the first strength of overall strength in the market. Um, the market is coiling one way or the other. It looks like it's getting ready to rip someone's face off. I just can't tell if it's the shorts or if it's the longs. And so I'll play it by ear, but more the most important thing that I want to stress again is that I'm going to keep a heads up on my stops because the stops are what the stops are what kills my PL on a day by day basis. Um, in terms of letting them go beyond the two stops back to back. Even uh, even when I do manage, like yesterday, to keep them extremely well under control, if I find myself taking trades in quick succession, right, that two stop rule at least makes me go back and look where I stand on the day and whether I want to continue trading, um, trading or not. So I, I would stress that. The other part that um, I see consistently in the guys that I coach are the ones who set a particular process goal for the day, right? Whether that is I'm only taking first touch or um, they're working on their NQ trade or they're working on the trap trade. They tend to focus on one particular, they'll have one to three, maybe four goals in terms of process. And they judge their entire day based on whether or not they uh, executed the process and they make a particular process their goal for an extended period of time, meaning 20 to 30 days until they nail it day in, day out. What happens to most traders is they say, well, I'm, in, I'm, I'm moving my stop. I'm really terrible at that. And then if they get to one day or two days where they successfully execute and they don't move their stop and they don't let the fear overrun them um, at the point of exit of the trade, right? Um, they do it for one or two days and they go, okay, I've got that now. On to the next thing. And the problem is once you step away from it, that problem can come right back and kick you in the butt. So what I stress is whatever your trading goals are, to incorporate and make the process 
make the goal to be the process as opposed to the goal being a particular P&L on the day. If you execute the process properly, the P&L will take care of itself. Okay. Let's take a quick look at um, a quick look at the um, Nasdaq, and then we'll go from there. So then I will let y'all go. My guess is we're going to have balance today. There's no more additional news. We haven't ripped down. We'll know, right? Obviously, if we get below Globex low and hold below, that, that entire area below is poorly auctioned, right? Uh, and so we'll keep an, uh, an eye out for that. I'll also keep an eye out for the trap trades. I will be using the trap trades in both directions today. Um, and if I can, if I have time to call them, I will. So on NQ... Where is my volume profile chart? There it is. Let's get rid of all this. And by the way, if y'all are if y'all are on this call and pretty much the executive summary portion of it is I've given the where I'm going to take the trade locations, right? Uh, everything else is just adding padding. If the additional information is causing confusion, um, then you have to make a choice as to whether or not you want to stay on. Obviously, I don't get offended if anyone drops off in any way, shape, or form. But the first thing that I see when I look at this is that we had a trend line that was giving us a downside move. And I'm going to say it's actually this, right? And that we had a channel you can pretty easily see that channel back on the bottom side of this. It's actually a megaphone pattern. So that I'd say the channel actually looks something like it's actually this where we broke below it, we got back in. And so we're within that channel, but if you see what I'm talking about on that megaphone pattern is this. See how the range from the top and the range from the bottom keeps getting wider and wider, right? And until we resolve this one or the other, and usually it's resolved with a directional move up or down, okay? Until we see it one way or the other, I, um, I'm probably going to stay with, we're, we're trading in the range, and uh, obviously if we, na naturally if we extend it out, this will be the bottom end of that range. Also importantly on NQ, guys, the, um, the rotations have gone from 3060 to 1530 with 15 point rotations being the usual size of the move before we're getting some kind of counter rotation. So keep in mind if you want it, if, uh, especially for uh, day traders guys, the um, first of all, the huge extensions that we were getting prior are going to be more difficult. So adjust your exits appropriately. Um, the second part of that is when we get extended 30, don't be surprised if we just stop and or that's the end of the up move or down move for the day and we counter rotate back up. And what will probably happen is we have 15, 30 most days and then on our big days that will expand that range out to 60 as opposed to what we had for the last month and a half which was 30 and 60. Why do I believe that? Because the Momo names, all the momentum names have gotten absolutely crushed and it generally takes a while to build the momentum back up in those and we'll see it we'll see when the range expands we'll know it we'll have two or three days of man the range has really moved so if I'm looking to take bigger picture a counter rotation I'm looking up 15 or down 15 when I'm trading before I take that trade okay um, so what has to happen in order to fix this problem is, is what everyone wants to know right we basically need to hold in order for a bullish scenario to occur what this is is simply building a lot of pressure Okay, uh, notice that it looks very similar, not exactly, but similar to this right here and similar to this right here. When we get this consolidation stuff, okay, the market, again, notice we have this right here. Okay, the market's building pressure in very small areas. Notice that right there, right? We're building pressure. Now, the move has been resolved to the downside each time, right? If we get above, this little bump right here okay, and you can see that's been somewhat of a support resistance area over the last um, over the past month right so if we get above specifically this 3606 
okay? And we hold above. That would open the move for a directional move back to the upside and a potential retest of the old highs, all right? So it hasn't happened yet, but it certainly can happen. Also, important to note, ES has been the stronger of the two and has been the, become the leader to the upside. So that relationship has changed a little bit. We'll know if NQ starts pushing ahead of ES on the upside or if it starts pushing back down to the downside that it's reasserted its leadership. ES has been unable to maintain leadership even when it's taken over over the last six months for more than a week or two before NQ steps back in one way or the other. Again, clearly, if we get below this point right here, at this point, we are poorly auctioned down to here. So really, if we get below whatever this is and we hold below here, we need to get a, we need to get above here. What you'll notice is when we're in areas like this, is it creates a lot of chop. Okay, as people try to anticipate the directional move one way or the other, and we end up having not enough strength to make the move one way or the other, they get frustrated, right, and they end up losing a lot of money in these areas. So don't let yourself get chopped up in this, right, and also be aware, even without a gap, we can make this directional move. There's no more data today to push it one way or the other. But like I said, if we get above this area, I'm going to be cautious on the short side and make sure that if I'm taking a short, that I have a really good extension before I start pressing back to the downside. And again, the other thing I'll look for, right, is if we break and then we fail and we get back underneath, that would trap traders above and give us a good push at least back to the backside of this channel for a backside test, right, and then possibly to the other end of the range. And then if we really get extended all the way all the way down here. And I'm not calling you the one. I'm going to, I'm going to let the market guide me uh, which way it's going, but I'm acutely aware that they're building a lot of energy here. Same thing, by the way, goes for ES. If we look at the chart, we have the exact same pattern. Okay, we're simply building a lot of pressure on these closes in a very tight area. You can see that right here. This is going to get resolved, and see, so they're going to get resolved with a upside move, strong upside move, right? And like I said, there's not much above us. This is the last little piece right here where we found resistance, but on the back side of this resistance here, there's not much to keep us from going higher if we push, right? On the downside, on the closes, obviously, once we get below it, if we get below and hold below 1870 area, to um, which is the last little bash and everything else is poorly auctioned underneath, right? Uh, that opens the door for the downside move. Just keep in mind, right, these head fakes where we're getting responsive buyers consistently from the downside back up has been a pattern all the way through. And we'll know when that pattern changes when we get to close something like this, right? We'll know that we can look for retraces higher to look to launch short positions. But consistently, even when we went down, you'll notice we pushed back up in the majority of afternoon sessions on the closes. We had one close at the low of the day. Everything else, even when it had a decent down day, pushed pretty well up off the low, right, in almost every circumstance. What this tells me, right, is getting bearish in this scenario out of all these days paid on one day, okay, if you, unless you got bearish up here. Uh, you can make it two days, right? But the rest of these days, pressing the short side has been a losing battle, and the easiest trade has been to look from locations long and look for that push back up. Um, and then we've been getting two-way play, so on good pushes up, you look, can look for that push back down. So I've got to get the uh, guys. I forgot. I got to get the. Uh, I've got to get the uh, trade station files out to everybody. I'll do that right now for those who are waiting. Oh, and let me adjust the zones. I apologize. Do that really fast. What is the green line at 1870.50? It was a single point of support, and I imagine I'm about to adjust it right now. Give me just a second. Where is my Okay, so let's do this 18, 
72, 25. Let's expand this real quick. Well, let me look back here. Hmm. Okay, so the problem with this is this is all poorly auctioned. See how thin this is? And we just zoom through it. And that opens up the possibility, as opposed to look at all the volume that built up here. Um, let me take, the, take a look at the 24 hour real quick. Okay. 78 below here. What is this? Okay, now we have a pretty good idea. Okay, I've got 68, 66 covered, 72, let me think through the sequence real quick, 70, 72 and a quarter. So what I am going to do, is do this, 72 and a quarter, we're opening right there. I'm going to actually cut this zone a little short. It would normally be up to 74 and a quarter like this. Okay, so this is how I'm going to handle this. Okay, guys, so normally the zone, I'll make it two points in front of Globex Low, but, and I'm going to leave the two points there, but if I was going to concentrate, this is the area I would concentrate in between here, uh, 73.50 and the Globex low at 72 and a quarter. I'll leave this up here, it could provide support. Actually, let's just make it easy on everyone. We'll move it back. If we miss it, we miss it earlier. So I'm gonna make the zone like this. So when we pop out, no one steps in early. I'm gonna make it 72 and a quarter to 73.50. It's only one point. The proper stop here is two points behind the zone. The problem is there is a single point of support here. It's not much. Um, so what I'm gonna say is, this area is weak. It could provide a, a point of um, inflection back to the upside. The way I'm going to use this, if, is I, if I see responsive buyers off of here the first time, I'm going to use it to set up a trap trade back to the other side of the range or for an attempt at gap fill. But I, unless I see a one minute tick divergence right here, I will not take this trade. And then also be aware, hmm, that's very difficult. If we, if we don't hold Globex low off the open, Okay, I'll probably still take this trade, and I'll keep my two-point stop. And uh, again, that it would have been nicer if Globex High were higher to make made this easier, but it didn't. Um, so the way I would handle that, let's say we open, I'm going to want to see, I'm going to want to see Globex low hold. Actually, if not, I'll leave my two-point stop behind, and that'll put me back to 70 and a quarter. And you may want to add half a point to that um, back here, and I probably will. So I'll put this stop at two and a half points for this location to account for that 70.50. So you may want to adjust your trade size just to be aware of that, right? Otherwise, I'm looking for if I don't take a trade in this area, and we've opened up right here in this area, so I'm going to want to see it hold that 72 and a quarter, we're basically a point above it right now, right? If we don't, and I'll give it five minutes to see if we don't hold it, I'm gonna to wanna to see responsive buyers step right in here, get back above Globex low, particularly on uh, NQ. And let me, I need to change the Globex low on NQ really fast. 35.84 and a quarter. Okay, so that's how I'm handling this area. Again, I prefer it just see it simply hold the 1872.26, and I think I'm going to give this um, the first 10 minutes to see how they handle it. Um, I don't want to step in right out of the gate. Uh, I want to see if sellers come in. And then the other thing is, notice we're not getting big rotations off the bottom yet. We're not flushing either, but if it was really strong, it would have already come in like this. It would have just ricocheted out of here. We haven't done that. I imagine they're going to make an attempt to get fill. So... We just have no rotation here is the problem. 7350 uh, is the high, down to 72 and a quarter. I generally want at least 
four and three quarters to push me lower. They just attempted. We one ticked the gap low. So they may take it back up from here. They definitely stepped in at that 72. Like I said, I'll give it 10 or 15 minutes to make a decision. And uh, we will, uh, and we're still above Globex lows on NQ. And we're only down four points, five points. I don't see them being able to push much lower, frankly. Uh, but like I said, I'll give it five or 10 minutes. So give me just, um, I hope that helped everybody in terms of trade location. If you take this 72 and a quarter, all right, realize you need it to step out of here pretty quickly or you're in danger of coming down to the 70 50. Um, and so, at any rate, I'm going to wait. And actually, if I do wait and I take this 70 50, if we don't hold here, uh, I want to see one tick divergence on the one minute. And assuming that I'm not taking Globex low and I'm not at this point, I'll want a two point stop behind. And I am well aware that I'll have to take the trade again right here at 68.50. I would have rather left this off, but there's not much I can do with it, unfortunately. The, the support is there. So um, at any rate, I will get this out to you all, and uh, I will update as I trade through the course of the day. I'll talk to you all later. My pleasure, guys. Have a great day.